internet friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. Do you have your Minnesota loon? Quack, quack. That's not a loon, that's a duck, I think. But it doesn't matter, it still works. So, and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> so, I got my friend Janet E. Johnson here. We separate that, so you know exactly, because that's your domain name, right, Janet? You got it. Janet got it. E. Johnson, that's pretty cool, I like that. Then you got the little hashtag. You can't see it in this picture, but you got a little hashtaggy thing on your back wall. It's another trademark that I recognized from when I was in Asheville. So I met Janet virtually online way back in the Blab days. Remember that crazy platform? Oh my god. That was fun. I know. I know. It was great. It was great while it lasted. It is a little Brady Brady Blunch bunch thing. But what I want to talk a little bit about is is how technology changes. I know that you pretty much specialize in the Facebook world, but all this stuff changes and I'll give him my little rant about Blab. I thought it was a great platform, and then the techies got in there and tried to add too much stuff like PayPal buttons, yeah. and and yeah. it got complicated, and nah. Well, and I don't think they had a true clear plan of what they wanted it to be, and they were freaked out when all these marketers came in and were so excited about it, and it grew so fast. I don't know. It just, it wasn't, it didn't become what they had planned it to be. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a talk show format where you got your show host, and then you got a guest, and you got a couple of uh, special guests. Yep, yep, exactly. And then it yeah. got weird, and so I wish it would come back. I, if you ever see a platform like that, please let me know, because I would like to, I mean, Facebook is getting close, but there's really not a place to interact like there was with Blab. There was actually a... No, a, no, exactly. Like I use, um, this morning I used the BeLive.tv. Yep, that's getting what close. what I use for the Facebook Lives. And it's cool because I can bring people on as right. they're interacting and talking, uh, but they're through Facebook Live. So I guess that would probably be the closest thing. And I can bring four up to three other people on mm -hmm. at the same time. So that's probably similar in a way, but it hasn't grown the way that Blab did where you had the rooms and you could see things versus Facebook Live is you've got to just be on that Facebook Live. Right. And I just, I just think that there is a possibility of the show host, so we could all be a Johnny Carson, you know. <laughs> you got Johnny Carson, Ed McMahon, and then the guests come on, and I think it would be a real cool thing to be able to have. But uh, yeah. it'll, it'll come along yeah. eventually. It is shifting that way. But when I was thinking about interviewing you today, I had a specific question, and that question is because I know you're really good at this Facebook stuff. Is Facebook posts versus uh, boosts versus advertising? What is the actual difference? Uh, okay, that's a really good question. Very good question. Um, I call the boost more than anything. It's the newbies, people that don't necessarily know what they're doing with Facebook ads. Um, I, I always say kudos to you that you are spending money on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. You know, you are spending money on Facebook. You realize you you got to put a little money behind those posts that are very important, but um, it is the the basic. I mean, that's your because Facebook tried to make it simple for the business owners. Just hit a button and, you know, it goes out. Right. But then they choose where it goes. They choose the different places. So it's not just in. Well, wait a Facebook minute. Community. Even if you have your because you can select your audience. And sometimes what I do is I do a video in front of the Minnetonka water tower and then I target a five mile or 10 mile radius of Minnetonka. Isn't that yes. going to that? So you're, you're actually. Yep. So you're so hitting your audience, but you are not. Let me sh tell you all the places that you are pushing this out. You are pushing it out on Facebook newsfeed. I think you have the option to choose Instagram or Facebook So with a boost. So you can go, yes, I want to be on Facebook too, or no, or sorry, Instagram too, or no, just, just Facebook. Right. Um, but then they push it out to Messenger. They put it on the right-hand side. They put it on um, their third-party application that they have. So it's, it's on uh, third-party website a lot of those things don't convert as well as just the facebook news feed oh so you could be wasting a lot of money money exactly and you're getting desktop and mobile and i found 90 percent of the time oh. mobile is less expensive so you can hit the boost here's what i would suggest and it's more for brand awareness you're not doing a true conversion campaign like converting to something because there's so many choices you can right. make with I facebook see. ads but the bottom line is boost is fine. But what I would do then 
if you hit the boost, which reminds me, that's kind of funny because I just hit boost on my Facebook Live this morning and I need to go do that too, is you got to go in to your ads manager then, go into edit the ad set level, so ad set, and you will pop up, open the, you'll see the word placements. In placements, then you can open that up to switch desktop, mobile, uncheck mark the right feed. The right feed's best for retargeting, but it doesn't really work that well for boosting or for anything else. You just pay more money. I see. Um, and 90% of the time I do mobile only. Because okay, that's, that less. makes a lot of sense. You're, you're starting to get into the, what are you talking about field? But that's why we yeah. hire people like you that know what so, the hell you're yeah, doing. Exactly. But <laughs> the key is I just, you know, if you have used ads manager or are comfortable with that at all, go to the ad set level, hit edit, placements and choose your placements properly. And See, now it's, now that, make, that was very enlightening for me because there's this one platform I use that uh, it, the stuff doesn't show up on a mobile phone. It just it isn't there. Not not the Facebook oh. stuff, but but it, but where my landing page is. So if for some reason, if I'm paying to reach people on mobile when they go to that landing page and that stuff doesn't show up, I'm wasting totally. money. Totally. You're wasting your money. I mm -hmm. get it. You should only then do desktop. Change it over just to desktop only. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because otherwise you're sending out money to places that A, don't convert as well. So you're, I'm um, getting clicks. I might be getting impressions, but it, the buck it. stops there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because they exactly. go, where is it? Wow. That was very enlightening for me today. Good. Good. <laughs> well, and it's simple. It's not difficult. I mean, you... My suggestion to any business owner is start getting semi-comfortable with Ads Manager. I mean, yeah. if you are doing ads, you really should look at Ads Manager. Um, it's where I uh, do all the audience building, too. You, you have audiences under there. And just you can manipulate your your uh, targeting a lot better. And you do yeah. classes on stuff like this. Do you have online trainings or anything like that? Did you offer? Yeah, I'm actually, I did a workshop a couple months ago live in person, not not Facebook live, but live in person. And it was strictly Facebook advertising. Um, and then now my next move I'm going to be launching soon will be a VIP day through Zoom. And I'm only going to allow three people. And that will be more than Facebook ads, but the main thing will be how to convert in Facebook ads. Yeah. You so know, that's what I might do on an ongoing basis, but virtually. You know, I see a lot of uh, these people that are teaching some of these things and you get into the programs and quite honestly, they're teaching like alumni graduate level when they should be teaching first and second grade stuff to people. Because because when you hear this stuff, it sounds exciting and everything, but the reality with it is I have no idea what you're talking about because I haven't gotten to that space yet. I think a lot of people make a mistake. I, I have that. purchased a program with a guy that is the best, one of the best Facebook ad guys out there. Um, went through a coaching program last year and the stuff was like, my head was spinning. At, you know, it was spinning. Even my head was, you know what I mean? Ezra? I do this stuff. Ezra so Forrest? What, uh, no, I, I love his stuff too, but no, Maxwell Finn is his name. He's very, very high level Facebook ads. Um, I do teach it basic. Uh, the group, it depends on who, the people, the three people that were there that at my last training that I did were all needed that basic. And I'm an elementary education major, so I do try to bring it down to that level. But you never know who you're talking to, too. So I just bring it to the level that if they've been in ads manager, they know it, then we skip it, yep. skip the basics and jump out. Because I've been in it, but I still get glazed over on this stuff. And it's uh, like... Hey, it's every day we get glazed over. <laughs> Exactly. This was weird. I always use an analogy. I like to use analogies. So it's kind of like you go to your car and you go to put the key in the ignition and go, what the heck? Where? Where's the... Because <laughs> yeah. it changed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly it. So, you know, it's something. But And Instagram now has a lot of advertising and I've been testing a lot with Instagram too. So just don't forget, Facebook owns Instagram. And recently, and I don't know when it happened because it just appeared to me, we are able to now market on Instagram the ads, even if you don't have an Instagram account. So you can use your Facebook page wow. to get over onto Instagram. So it is, you know, a whole nother marketplace basically to get over to and see right. if that's converting better or, you know, which is working, which you're paying less for. It's kind of the cool. Okay. I've got another uh, Facebook and sort of a general advertising question, but um, here's, it's really hard to explain, but some people have low priced products 
are they kind of like wasting their money on Facebook Stop. because what what is like the the margin? Is it like a hundred dollar product? Does it have to be a five hundred dollar product before you no, can start? No, I tell people no less. I would I push no less than thirty dollars, um, and that's tough. That's tough. We do I do funnels for very very small products right now. Uh, sorry, maybe I'm using terminology that people don't know. You did a funnel. Facebook <laughs> ad funnels basically you start here, you move here, you move here to get them to the sale. Well, and our goal isn't to direct them to the sale directly. It's to give them an ebook, give them something to get them to the email list. Then we have an upsell of their product on the landing page or on that thank you page after they've entered their email. You have a one time offer. Right. Then, uh, like one company actually has, uh, he sells mugs, just like similar to this. So he sells the mugs. And then it, once they've said, yes, I want to buy the one, they even say buy three and save even more. So they have like upsell, upsell. Right. So now you're trying to push them to the next level, but you also have them in the email list. So let's say they didn't purchase anything. Now you can get back in front of them with emails. So that's kind of what I suggest for the smaller products, but you are exactly on point. And I think it's going to be even more tough in the future, in the near future for the small ROI products. See, it's a lot different if you're just like building a list of people that might be buying a home someday because then when that home sells, you can kind of justify it. But when you're yes. trying to sell yes. t-shirts. It's the lifetime value of a customer yeah. is what you want to really I think a lot of people make end. a mistake by not looking at that long-term high agree. ticket on the back end kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one thing like with these people that I'm working with right now, I have three of those going right now. And uh, bottom line is I tell them in the beginning, we're going to test and you're not going to make money. You're not, you need to test these things to see what's going to cost the least, what converts the best. Exactly. And we do a ton of testing. That's the and hardest then, part. You say, okay, so I'm going to give you $500 or $1,000 and you're just going to test something. What? Yep. So Facebook <laughs> you have to. And you gotta do it. It's hard. <laughs> it's tough for a lot of people to, to handle that. And you may see some sales in the meantime while you're testing, but you just don't expect. Yeah, but once you get it and you can scale it, then it's beautiful. So and almost the, the one of the best ways to do it is like a free ebook kind of thing, because then there's low risk and you can actually see, all right, am I getting some interest in my ebook? That's yeah. exactly it. And you have them on the email list. You have them on your own home. We I just did a Facebook Live just before this, and I was talking about owning your own building. I think this is my new saying: build your brand. Don't build your brand on one piece of land. Do not, because Facebook yeah. actually went, uh, one company went down because the Facebook algorithms changed and they couldn't sustain anymore. So they're shutting house. Yep. And it's like, well, why? They're doing something wrong because you must have just counted on Facebook only then to build your entire brand. Well, it's, it's interesting too, because that's just a common sense kind of thing, like a diversified portfolio and all that kind of stuff. It's like, why would you put all your eggs in one basket? It's a, it's a common thing. Why people still do it? I don't know. I don't either, you know, and I, I always tell people, maybe if you, if you're hurting for money and you're just brand new, go ahead and just start with Facebook, but you got to get yourself a website, build that email list, yep. um, get your own, own products, your own stuff. And then don't just come on Facebook only pick a couple others, but, or one other at least, but not too many either. Don't do too many social media pieces. Well, know, well, one, we'll one commodity we all have the same and that is time. And so I don't like to take too much people's time in these. I just like to get it quick so people get to know who she is and all that kind of thing. So is there anything else you want to share before um, we sign this off and I beam it up to the universe, as they say? Beam it up? Um, no, I mean, I love giving a, a takeaway. So my, my takeaway would be, being that this is what we talked about mainly, was how Facebook ads work. Go look at Facebook ads managers and... Look, go into the ads manager and play around in there and set up an ad through ads manager on Facebook versus just hitting the boost. That would be my so recommendation. It might be a good idea to take a Sunday and just kind of just spend the day looking around, don't really do anything, just get familiarized with it all. Exactly. There's tons, I'm sure there's tons of YouTube free videos out there that would uh, show you. There is, but some of those things... They're just clickbait is Be all careful. they are. They're bait and switchy <laughs> kind of stuff. So I'd rather they go to Janet E. Johnson to get their information. There you go. Or, awesome. 
So I noticed on Facebook, I, I, I've been on it for quite a while, but then I noticed that there's actually three different phases of things, which is the awareness and then the uh, relationship building and the conversion. I didn't realize it because I always say plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit. Yeah. You know? yeah. There's, it's right there for me. I didn't even notice it all these years. That's okay. Like you get into the ads manager. You got it. Okay. Thank you. That's it. So thank you, Janet E. Johnson, for being here on Synergy Cafe. And I'd love to do this again sometime. So. Sounds good. Thank okay. You, Peace. Thank you. I will have this beamed up to the universe soon. <laughs>